right. So I am here with Tori Husk and Evan Stiles, the head coach of AAC. And we're here talking about how life has changed a little bit in quarantine, as well as, you know, Tori's uh, journey through swimming. So, you know, I wanted to start with you, Tori. Um, when did you think you um, were kind of hitting the, the point of being a uh, Olympic trials caliber swimmer? So I feel like I never really thought about it too much beforehand. Like it wasn't something that I dwelled on. Um, I feel like I kind of just let the process take, um, take over and I kind of just trusted that. And like Evan always says, trust the process, but <laughs> I just, I never really thought too much about the the future and like I never really worried too much about that I kind of just enjoyed like the journey I guess and just I always would focus on like improving myself like um every day in practice and I feel like I focused more on um each practice like individually than like the future so and Evan for you was there a specific point you thought oh Tori has what it takes um in all honesty, it was probably um, well before she made her first cut. Uh, you knew it was coming. You just had to wonder when it was going to happen. Um, you could tell as a you know, 12, 13-year-old uh, that she was really talented and she worked really hard and she trained great with her teammates. And uh, then when I got to coach her myself and see what she puts in every day, uh, you know, you knew it was going to happen. And uh, I don't remember a specific moment, but um, I guess I'll say when she made her first cut is when I realized it. <laughs> um, and, you know, you said that there's definitely some talent there at, you know, 12 or 13, Tori, growing up. Did you, or, or, you know, kind of at that age, were you playing multiple sports at that point? Were you concentrating mostly on swimming? At that point, I was concentrating mostly on swimming. I did do track for um, about a year, probably in, I don't know what age. It's sometime in middle school. Um, but for the most part, my focus was on swimming. And obviously, school too. I, I know you are a very good student. So when you're talking about you know, balancing school and swimming program, you know, have you, have you needed to make any changes to one or the other? How have you kind of balanced those two? Um, I feel like it's kind of just a learned thing. I never really found it that it was a huge problem just because um, as school got, it like is something that happened gradually. Like I wasn't just thrust in a position where I had to go to like eight practices a, a week or like where I had, I don't know, X amount of homework, like two hours. I don't know. It doesn't really matter as much like the actual number, but I feel like I just learned to manage it as time went on. And um, it's kind of just like a learned thing and you learn to um, do it, I guess, just because you have to, so. Um, I think that's one of your cats, is that right? Yeah. Which one is that? You wanna, you wanna introduce the cat? Okay. <laughs> this is Truffles. <laughs> um, Evan, you know, we're talking about, you know, specifically, let's look at quarantine and how things have changed. What was it like for you as a coach to deal with quarantine? How was your, how did you have to change your training schedule to work within, you know, quarantine? Well, I think uh, originally, you know, we, we had to figure out how to keep them active. Um, we would create dry lands for them to do every day. Uh, we had a couple Zoom calls every week where anybody could come on and we would just talk about certain, I would have a topic. It could be college recruiting or it could be uh, what to do to, to be ready for swimming once we get back into swimming or, you know, how to stay motivated or, you know, many different things that we, we talked about. Um, so, you know, from the physical side, it was hard to be out of control 
um, you know, you're creating these dry lands and trying to help them out with some guidance towards how to stay active and stay busy and, and, and stay in some sort of shape. Uh, but it was up to them if they did it and how well they did it. So um, that was hard for me as a coach to not really be in control of that. Uh, one of the things that I did notice as time went on, though, was this original I'm going to stay in great shape and I'm going to, you know, be ready to go. Uh, when we get back in the water, you know, as the time started going longer and longer, the, the kids started to get a little just unmotivated, um, you know, lackadaisical, I guess, you know, I, I don't want to say depressed, but there was definitely a, a change in their demeanor um, and some of the things they were saying. So really trying to stay positive with them uh, was important for me to uh, convey that, hey, everything's going to be okay. We're all in the same boat. Um, stay active and you're going to be better off when we get back in. So um, those were all hard things because you've never had to do them before and I hope I never have to do them again. Um, so, uh, you know, just being outside the box for real was, was crazy. So. And when, um, you know, we have started getting back into the pool a little bit, um, how, are you able to tell kind of who is doing what is it generally has the mood been very excited about the idea of getting back in the water? How, how have most of the kids responded? Yeah, I think, you know, for me as a coach, uh, the first thing you notice is how excited they are to see everybody. Um, you know, in a world of social distancing, that's probably the hardest thing as a coach I have to deal with right now is keeping teenagers socially distant. They don't understand it. They don't think about it. And it's all of a sudden, oh my gosh, and sh you know, they're in a big clump and you're like six feet apart or, you know, whatever. So that, that's really hard. But the energy that they're bringing is great because they want to be there. They want to be there and see their friends in person, not on a phone or on a computer. And um, the excitement that they get back into this routine that they've always had as part of their life is great. So right now I think it's awesome. You know, it, it's, you know, like, Hey, we're all back together, even though we're not even really all back together because we have to have like a bunch of different practices because we can only put so many, many people in a pool, but they'll take six kids and make it fun or they'll take 12 kids now and make it fun. So um, you know, I, I'm excited for when we can go further down the road here and actually put 40 people in the pool or something like that. But, um, for right now, you definitely see that their mood has changed. They're totally engaged and ready to go. So it's awesome. Tori, for you specifically, how was your transition from going to 20 ish hours in the pool to zero hours in the pool and then being able to get back a little bit, what was that transition like for you? So initially after practice was cut off and like all the pools like were closed, I was like weirdly motivated. Like I would um, exercise twice a day and do um, a weight workout. And I would also like go on a hike. So I'd be exercising and like be on my feet for like the entire day pretty much. But eventually, um, <laughs> I, I just started to get um, really tired and I mean a little bit like demotivated kind of like what Evan mentioned before um, so I like developed a routine and that helped make it a little bit better it was really difficult for me not having a routine for the first time in like years um, just because like I didn't know what to do with myself especially since like I couldn't see my friends or anything so I developed a routine where in the morning I would exercise and I would um, go on the rower in my basement in the bike for 45 minutes each and then I would also do a weight workout in the afternoon I'd go on the rower in the bike again for an, um, an hour and a half total and then I would also um, run hills um, which helped like I feel like work on my like mental toughness and I would work on the big ropes outside like I don't know what they're called like the heavy ropes that people move with their arms and um, during this time I just focused <laughs> I, w I was mainly focusing on my strength training and bu building up on like explosiveness and so that my walls and my um, starts would be better in the future when I did get back in the pool. About a month into training um, or into quarantine, I was really fortunate enough to have access to 
but um, it was a really short pool. So I worked a lot on turns underwaters. I also used a lot of bungee cords and like, I feel like resistance training just to slow me down kind of in like a 40 yard pool. So I used like parachutes and like drag socks for the first time. I had never used those before, um, which was really interesting. And I feel like that helped me just like maintain my feel for the water and make sure that my technique was still um, kind of there, I guess. Evan came to watch me um, practice and just help coach me um, quite a few times, um, which was really great because it's nice to have like another set of eyes to watch you and just make sure that you're um, maintaining good habits, which I mean, sometimes you don't even realize that you're doing something wrong until um, they point it out. So it was nice to have those reminders and stuff. So, yeah. And Evan, how was it having to modify a practice schedule to fit in a backyard pool? Uh, you know, it's kind of the unknown. It's like, all right, 40 feet, that's like 14 yards. Um, and she takes three strokes and does a flip turn. And, you know, how do I make that into a practice? Uh, so uh, a lot of trial and error, uh, a lot of things like, shooters and uh, minutes worth of swimming on a cord and uh, like she said drag socks with shooters and, and things like that and um, you know I think the hardest part for her was to try to maintain good technique in a, in a small pool it, it gets really wavy um, so you know trying to keep her in a situation where she's not swimming in the middle of an ocean, um, but she can maintain good technique. So, uh, you know, every, every time I would ask her for feedback on how it was and how we could modify it. And um, eventually we got to go into a longer pool that was like 17 yards. And that really made a difference in terms of writing practices and stuff like that. Cause it was more like actually swimming six, seven, eight strokes per length instead of three or four. Um, and then, we got into a 25 meter pool. So it was a lot of adjustments. It was a lot of like just getting creative and trying to make it so that it was hard, but fun and, you know, all at the same time. So it was fun. Now, obviously this is all culminated. All this hard work has culminated in several Olympic trials cuts. Uh, Tori, you know, what, what has it, what has it been like for you to kind of have this, this type of success and obviously Olympic trials would be happening, you know, right around now. Um, were you excited for trials? Had you started switching gears to that meet? What was, you know, in terms of how preparation for trials came, what, what was that like pre and post quarantine? So I was really excited for trials. It was like what I was looking forward to. I mean, the entire year, it was what I was training for. So, I mean, obviously I was a little bit disappointed when it was canceled, but I mean, I also saw it, like, we all saw it coming. Like we knew that um, it wouldn't happen just because everything was getting canceled. And um, I mean, you got to keep everyone healthy. So um, at the same time though, when I first heard that, um, it was canceled. Um, I was also really relieved because I didn't have a pool at the time and I wasn't sure how I was going to train for it and just work on like all the little details that you need to work on before the meet. Um, before everything like COVID-19 and all that, um, I feel like my training was still like pretty consistent, like nothing much had changed. It was just, um, like it, it was just, I was working on the same stuff every day. I was, I was really fine tuning my turns at the time and working on my, um, making sure that my open turns were fast because they were a real weak point for me. I mean, they still are, but I was focusing a lot on that before the me. Um, the only difference in training leading up to um, Olympic trials was that I didn't, I wasn't going to taper for, and CSAs and I was going to use that as a training meet and just see kind of where I was where I'm at at that point that meet was canceled <laughs> but um that's what I was going to use the meet for but other than that my training was still pretty consistent in quarantine the main thing that I worked on was my strength training and I feel like 
um, that was really important because it's really hard to find um, time to do that during the school year. So I feel like this is actually maybe even beneficial to me. Um, Evan, as far as, you know, as a coach, this is not, Tori is not your first Olympic trials athlete. What, from a coaching perspective, what types of strategies are there going into trials? Are you modifying routines at all to kind of get, get swimmers prepped for that meet? What, as a coach, you know, do you do or strategies do you think of when, when approaching trials? Well, in, in my past experiences, um, you know, I, I think that I know that they know that trials is a huge meet, probably the biggest meet that they'll ever go to. Um, so in my routine, I try to just keep it as normal as it would be. Like we're tapering for senior champs or, you know, something like that, because I know what's going on in their head. I know the butterflies are there and all those kind of things. So um, I don't want to compound that nervousness by being excited and, you know, all that stuff too. So um, I just try to be normal and, um, you know, try to keep their routines as close to what they're used to as possible because it's worked in the past. So why change something now? Um, you know, for Tori, we never really got the chance to get there um, because, you know, we've been out of the water since March. So, uh, we were going to train all the way through, you know, June and then rest for trials and let her go. Uh, so I guess I don't change a lot. Um, I, uh, just try to keep them mentally sharp and get all the little fine tuning details nailed down and, you know, be very positive with them and make them feel like they're capable of doing crazy things because that's what they are. For uh, Tori, you know, she's, she's qualified multiple events. Is there any um, thoughts going into the meet about how you would structure certain events or if there's a specific focus on certain events more than others? Um, I mean, for sure, there's definitely a, a focus on, you know, the, her primary events uh, like Hunter Fly, uh 50 free 200 im um have you know 100 free even like so we, we have a lot of great events uh so i think for and, and luckily for us the, in the, the way the program set up is hunter flies on the first day so we get kind of get to get that one in the water and, and and done pretty early in in the lineup um after that it really kind of depends on how the semifinals and finals break down with uh, what she has maybe in the morning that day. Um, we're going to play it by ear and, and see how she does and make decisions as we need to. Um, if we need to scratch an event, then we will. Um, if we need to scratch out of the semifinals because she's got a finals coming up after that, then we'll do that too. So um, it really depends on rest though. Uh, like if, if one event is the first event and the other events, the last event, we know she has an hour and a half in between, you know, we'll probably do both of them, but um, you just have to kind of look and see how it's going to play out and uh, see how it's going. So luckily she's adaptable and ready to roll. Um, so I always try to get her in as much as possible because I think opportunities are important and you don't want to let an opportunity go by. Um, but if you know that, there's a better opportunity coming up in 10 minutes. Let's uh, let's let that opportunity go for a little bit. Uh, Tori, you know, this is not, obviously trials is a big deal, but you've swam now for, for the USA in, in junior level and you went to Budapest. Um, how did you feel, how do you feel that those meets went? Um, did you do anything different for those meets than a senior champs, for instance, and you know, how, how is that in preparation for Olympic trials? I think that the meet in Budapest really helped me um, kind of prepare for trials just because it also is a meet that had semifinals, finals, prelims, and then it also had a waiting room um, that we had to go in like 20 to 15 minutes, uh, 15 to 20 minutes before uh, 
the race. And I feel like that was something really different and something that I, it was something that I was not used to. Um, so I feel like going to that meet um, really helped kind of fine tune in my routine and just um, develop some familiarity with a new like environment like that. So I feel like it, it, it will definitely help me with the, um, in the future, especially in an environment like try um, like Omaha and trials where I've heard it's just really overwhelming and I feel like it's good to have something that you can lean on kind of in a new routine that you can um, find some calm in. So I feel like that me um, will really help me in the future. Great. You know, backing up a little bit and talking, you know, just generally about swimming to, uh, what are your guys's, what, what would you consider some of your, a, a favorite or particular memory from swimming in as a whole that, you know, stands out to you? Tori, as, as a swimmer, do you have a, you know, a favorite race or a favorite um, experience that happened that's kind of really stuck out to you? Um, I don't have like a favorite in particular, like I'm not really good with choosing like a single moment, but some of my favorite moments are from travel meets and they're actually like the stuff that happens before the meet or after just like going to the grocery sh um, store as a teen, like is always really fun and like just like little moments like that. But um, another meet that, um, another like a specific moment that was um, really special to me was in Budapest when our mixed um, medley relay set the junior world record and then we got to go on the podium and we heard the national anthem play and they like rose the flag on like this pulley. And I feel like that was a really neat experience. But overall, I feel like my favorite moments are, um, so some of my favorite moments are just from travel meets. And, yeah. And Evan, from a coaching or, or swimming perspective, you know, what would be your favorite uh, or one of your favorite experiences? Uh, um, it's, you know, it's hard to say. I, I've been coaching a long time now. It's crazy. Um, uh, but I mean, the coaching moments that stand out to me are the coaching moments that show that hard work pays off. And I don't have, I'm not going to mention one particular one necessarily, but you know, every, every, every kid that practices with you, you know, that works hard, you know, sometimes it works out and they have the, the abilities to, to be like Tori and to have those experiences, but most of them don't. And they are just trying to make zones or, you know, sectionals or something like that. And so when the hard workers that come every day and do everything they're supposed to do and, and, you know, it finally happens for them and you're just, you know, so happy for them to, you know, finally they've reached a goal that they've been trying to get. Um, those are the ones that I think stand out most to me. And, uh, you know, one last question as far as, you know, quarantine has gone. Have either of you guys picked up any interesting or new hobbies or watched anything interesting um, on Netflix or anything uh, to pass the time? Tori, what, have you picked up anything? Um, I've always been really into art and I feel like I was able to work on it more during quarantine. It's not necessarily something new, but it's something that I like to do when I have more time. So I was able to work on that. So that was really fun. And Evan, anything uh, specific for you? Uh, mainly, uh fixing things around the house, uh, doing things that maybe you just didn't have time to do before, like cleaning the basement and the linen closet and painting this or fixing that. Uh, and then watching Netflix. Um, I would say the Tiger King, but uh, we didn't even make it all the way through that one. But uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of great British shows on. We're watching Broadchurch right now, which is amazing. Um, and some other, there's Harlan Coben, uh, series that are, are like murder mystery type shows that are great so um we've been doing a lot of that well thank you guys both for uh joining me for a little bit i appreciate the time and um hopefully we'll get to see each other face to face soon yeah absolutely thank you